Good morning, everyone. What Good a great morning. day it is to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Yes, it is. We've already had one prayer request given just a moment ago. And we want to check and see if there are any others that we have this morning as we go to the Lord in <coughs> prayer and begin our service. Billy needs prayer. He's really sick, but he's Okay. There's a lot of people right now that are down with this flu. We yes. do we need to hold them up and be in, be in prayer for them as well. And... Uh, the Lord has really been touching. Uh, I had shared Wednesday night that uh, one of my cousins has been on the prayer list for a while, sent a heartfelt thanks to the church, said for praying for them because the situation is getting better. And said, you know, it's something because I know it's prayer that's doing it. So tell, tell the church thanks. So I want to keep that in mind. Let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Our gracious God of heaven, we come to you and we're so thankful. We're so grateful for the day that you have given us today. My Lord God, for your love and your grace and your mercy and your goodness that's everlasting. My Lord God of heaven, we ask you to remember this very special need that was given a few moments ago. God, you know all about it. You know, Lord God of heaven, that nothing is impossible with you. And we're believing you for healing in these bodies right now, we pray. Oh God of heaven, for every, every, every home, every family, represented here this morning. I pray, Lord God of heaven, that needs be met. Remember those on our prayer list today. Continue to move in their hearts and their lives. We, we know that you are our source for whatever we have need of. Bless us in this service this morning. I pray that the Holy Spirit of God move in this service in a very mighty way that hearts and lives are touched and changed and transformed into your image and into your likeness. Yes. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. amen. amen.
Praise the Lord. What a song. What a prayer. I've been excited about the service this morning. You missed Wednesday night. We had a great service Wednesday night. The presence of the Lord was here in a very special way. And Brother Steve was sitting back there squirming <coughs> and fidgeting. And uh, finally he just burst out. He said, you know, you're preaching my message. <laughs> he said, it just goes right along. It goes right along. And I love it when the Lord does that because it's just confirmation that he's building to something. And you know, he's building something around here. He's building a foundation that is going to change the hearts and lives of many people. Amen. I know sometimes it looks bleak and sometimes it looks can get discouraging and sometimes in the hour that we're living today it seems like there's no hope. But sometimes people seem to get worse and worse instead of better and better. But see, I still believe in a prayer answering God. Amen. Amen. I still believe that every time we call a loved one's name out in prayer that the Holy Spirit touches their heart. Yes. Still whispers in their ear. Still reminds them, like the prodigal down in the hog pen, there's a better way. Amen. And all you got to do is swallow your pride yes. and take the step to the better way. God's doing the work. The devil's fighting tooth and nail. But you know what? There is no power greater or stronger Amen. than the power of God. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. There is no power greater or stronger than the power of God. Amen. Amen. So as we keep on praying and we keep on fasting and we keep on trusting, we keep on living, we keep on believing, yes. there's a time of planting and then there's a time of harvest. You know, you have setbacks in, heart, in the planting season. Yeah. Bought a greenhouse last year and set a few seeds out and, and did real well with it. So I said, man, we're going to do the same thing this year. Do you realize I've had to replant that thing twice? <laughs> the wind keeps knocking it over. Mm. Twice the wind has knocked it over. Wow. With a concrete cinder block weighting it down. Wow. That there's no way that the wind is going to knock this over. <laughs> Twice the wind has knocked it over. That's and I had to start all over. Mm. But you know what? I'm going to keep on starting over. Amen. The wind may come, the wind may howl, the wind may blow. Keep planting. But I'm going to keep on planting. <laughs> I'm going to keep on praying. Yes. I'm going to keep on singing. Yes. I'm going to keep on shouting. I'm going to keep on telling people about the love of Jesus. Amen. And trying to love people the way Jesus loves people. Yes. Come Brother on, Steve, yeah. come on and preach for us this morning. Get him up there, brother. Get him up there. <laughs> Hallelujah. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Got smart and brought me some water this time. I got a little choke last time. Before we even get going good this morning, I have got to say something very, very important. I want to wish my wife a happy 25th birthday. Now, you know I wouldn't be telling the story up here behind the pulpit. She's 25. <laughs> I'm not lying. Happy, happy birthday, Nancy. Thank you for being here. And thank you that you shared your birthday with us. Yes, today. yes. Oh, don't let her fool you. She's going to get fed good here in a little bit, okay? So I had to cut a deal, see? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> if you got your Bible with you, turn to Isaiah 2 and 2, and I'll be reading some scriptures out of there this morning. It says, Isaiah, in verse 2, it says, And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountain." And shall be exalted above the hills, and all nations shall flow into it. Amen. 
The title of my message this morning is, It's a Tough Climb, folks. Yes, it is. Yeah. It's a Tough Climb. Would you pray with me? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this opportunity to come before you once again this day. Lord, we thank you for the freedoms that you give us to allow us to come to you like we do, assemble like we do, to praise your name and to love you. Lord, I ask that you would give me the words that will portray whatever that you want me to be saying. Lord, it's in your name I pray. Amen. 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 The Lord's house will be established at the top of the mountain. Yes. Not in the middle, not halfway up, not three quarters, but the top I love that. of the mountain. Yes. For he will reign over all nations. Amen. That's pretty special, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yes. That kind of makes you, gives you a good feeling, don't it? Yes, it does. The mountain, though, is it's used in the Bible throughout. And I'm just going to hit Abraham. He took Isaac up the mountain, didn't he? Yes, he yes. did. To be sacrificed. Yes. But God provided. Yes, he did. Amen. David, he climbed the mountain to hide. But God provided. Yes, he did. Moses, wow. He climbed the mountain and spoke to God. Yes, yes. he did. Jesus, he climbed the mountain to pray. Yes, he did. So pretty special. Isaiah verse 3 says, says, Many people shall go and say, Come, let us climb the mountain, and he will teach us his ways. So this morning, I want to talk about a mountain that every Christian has got to climb. Got to face its treacherous slopes and the obstacles that have become before them. And that's the spiritual mountain. This mountain, many, a bunch of folks have started up her slopes, but they never make it. They never make it to the summit because they fall prey to the many obstacles, the many dangers that lay in her path to make it to the top. Yes. Now I'll be honest with you, when I think of mountains and treacherous mountains and things like that, Mount Everest comes to my mind. Yeah. Mount Everest. I've read stories about this mountain, how treacherous it is and yeah. how hard it is to get up or yes. and how, how difficult it is to climb. So let me put Mount Everest into just a little bit of perspective this morning. It's the tallest mountain in the world. She's at 29,135 feet. It's by far the world's most formidable mountain to climb. Amateurs and novelists are advised to stay away from this mountain. Don't even attempt it. Only a seasoned and experienced climber should attempt climbing Mount Everest. Amen. To give you an idea, the World Trade Center's were 1,365 feet tall. It would take 22 World Trade Centers stacked upon each other to make it to the summit of Mount Everest. Wow, wow. that's tall. Then you take into account all the challenges of this mountain. The low temp low is 100 below. It says that your saliva would freeze if you didn't have a cover over your mouth. Wow. Avalanches, snow-covered sinkholes, 50, 60, 100 mile an hour winds howling, just to name a couple. It's recorded that the Humba or the Humba fall, ice falls have claimed over 20 lives alone on average. A total of 179 people have perished trying to climb this mountain. Personally, it's a dumb thing to do. I mean, if they tell you to stay off of it, why are you going to climb it? Those who deviate from the chosen path become frozen reminders 
for the others to stay on course. Stay on the path. Kind of goes hand in hand with our spiritual mountain. Right. For the Bible tells us the path to righteousness is narrow. Yeah. yeah. And the path to destruction is broad yes. and wide. Yes. Stay on the path. Yes. Yes. Our spiritual mountain, though, folks, it's unequal. And it's difficulty to reach her summit. Everest only pales in comparison to reaching the spiritual summit. Yes. It's already claimed countless of thousands of people. From the minute you start the slopes, the slightest obstacle can be fatal, as the human ice falls are. One blaring detail about a Christian's climb to the top of this mountain there is very little rest. Very little rest. And why? Why do I say that? Because when you start climbing this mountain, there's a spiritual warfare raging yes. in your heart and in your mind. Yes. When you start climbing this mountain, a little antenna goes up and it goes bing. And Satan says, okay, let's get him. Let's 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 uh let's make sure here we gotta we gotta put some doubts in this old boy's mind. We gotta put a few landmines in his way. Yes. See what he's made of. Yes. I want to touch on three little old factors this morning that I believe are essentials to conquering the mountain. And here's the thing now, it all revolves revolves around one thing. Okay? Now pay attention. It's going to be a quiz afterwards. <laughs> the first one is preparation. Webster Dictionary says to prepare is activities in anticipation of planning. For better terms, getting ready to achieve your goal. Yes. Being prepared. One of the most common causes of failure is failure to prepare. Amen. We tend, we tend to look right by preparation, don't we? Yes. We, 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 like I've done so many times myself, we just jump right in not knowing the full extent of what we're really getting into. Kind of like men and instructions. Who yeah. needs them? Yes. <laughs> okay. Until you're scratching your head four hours later in disgust because you have no clue what you got yourself into. Yes. And to make matters worse, the wife says, Do you want the instructions now? <laughs> yes. When all else fails, read the instructions. And follow them. And follow them. <laughs> Been there, done that more than once. Don't want to go there again. How many Christians have started their journey up the mountain not having a full understanding of the instructions laid out by our Savior? How many of us have started out in a whirlwind ready to go? I no doubt in my mind that the intentions are well founded. There's no doubt in my mind that they're eager to get to the top of the mountain to prove themselves worthy of God. No doubt. They want to do good. We want to do good. Yes. Yes. Amen. I want to do good for God. Yes. And when I fail God, it hurts me. Yes. You know, it says that, you know, when I make a mistake, I, well, I should pray to the Lord and ask to correct, you know, help me correct that mistake. Yes. But you know what I find myself, I guess I feel so guilty. It says if you ask one time, you're forgiven. Yes. I will repeat that 50 times. Lord, please forgive me for that. Lord, please forgive me yes. for that. Because it's, it's up here. You're forgiven. Yes. Satan is the one that says, man, you may go on take you up. The more you're uh, asking to correct that sin, you could be praying for somebody else. Yes. 
eager to get to the top of the mountain themselves. But the lack of preparation and experience, it really can be devastating. Yes. Yes. As in average, amateurs or new Christians or novelists or somewhat seasoned Christians should learn and gain some experience. Your journey up the mountain starts the day you give your life to Christ. Yes. Yes. All I'm saying is, is be patient. Trust God's instructions. Yes. Let Him prepare you for the treacherous climb that you're about to undertake. Trust me. You will not make this on your own. Amen. Just know this. Satan is on that mountain too. Yes. yes. Do you honestly think he's going to let you just walk up this mountain? The answer is no. It ain't going to happen. I'm going to tell you what he's going to do. And I'm speaking from some experience here. He'll help you get started on that climb. He'll help you overcome a few small obstacles. He's going to let you build your confidence up all the while knowing you ain't nowhere near prepared for what he's fixing to give you. He might even be allow you to overcome the first major ledge or the first major obstacle. Now you're really sorry. You beat the devil with confidence. You can't be stopped. And just when you think you got the mountain figured out, all figured out, the winds come. Oh. Yes. Then the bitter cold. Yes. Then the fight for life is real. You find yourself dazed, a bit confused. But the worst comes as in the avalanche does. And it sweeps you back down the mountain into the valley once again. You're hurt. You're bruised. You're broken, and you realize at that moment you didn't know half as much as you thought you did. Right. Amen. Because yeah. you started up the mountain not prepared. You started up the mountain when you're going to be gung ho and you're going to take the world. Yeah. And Satan says, Oh boy, got me a pigeon. <laughs> Takes years. To rebuild your confidence. Yes. To ever even think about trying to climb that mountain again. Yes. Some of us never do. This is exactly what Satan wants. He wants you to start that climb and not be prepared. You become easy pickings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And here's the fact. I know I was. Every mountain starts in the valley, doesn't it? How long you stay there is up to you. Yes. Okay. Okay. I got it, Steve. What gets me out of the valley and off to the right start on my spiritual climb? I'm glad you asked me that this morning. The answer is prayer. Yes. Your prayer time is an absolute must. Yes. For beginner, novelist, veteran, all alike, prayer is the key to preparation for the challenges that you will face on that mountain. Build your relationship with Jesus Christ. Yes. Rely on his wisdom. And most of all, trust him. Trust him. Now the second thing is, is dedication. To dedicate is to give all your resources to sell out to commit all are we really willing to sell out to Jesus it's a question to you are you willing to commit all are you willing to give all now I know none of us here would ever second guess Jesus. No. Especially, we would never ask for his guidance. 
And when we didn't get the answer that we thought we should get, especially us, when that guidance is something we don't want or we don't like, we would never go, are you sure, Jesus? Are you sure that's what you want me to go? Because let me, let me tell you something, Jesus. I, I was thinking, you know, while I was praying, and, and I, I, I tell you, mm, I really need to go down this road right here, Jesus. <laughs> Jesus says, no, you need to go here. Well, Yes. I'll meet you in the middle, Jesus. Yes. I, I'll, I'll meet you in the middle. Yes. We don't do that. No. Come on no. now. We don't do none of that. No. Yes, we do. Ten or twelve times a month. That's it. <laughs> in today's world, dedication is a joke. We stay committed to something as long as it serves our needs. Yes. And when that stops, we're done. Yes. We're like a vapor. We don't want no more part of it. Man, I'm glad I went out this morning. Don't want no more part of nothing. We've made it so easy to say I quit. I don't like my job. I quit. That's it. Let's don't try to figure out why I don't like my job. Yes. Let's don't try to make things better so I would like my job. Yes. I, I quit. quit. I'm out. I'll go to another job. That's work. Ain't nothing to it. Don't like my marriage? I quit. I quit. No need to work on that marriage. For heaven's sakes, I can spend three hundred dollars on a cheap lawyer, and I'm divorced. Yes. I'm gone. Lickety split. Hey, brother Leon. As long as you do the rowing, I'll stay in that boat with you, boy. Just don't ask me to row. I don't want I, I want it easy. You wrote it. All right. Folks, we got to stay dedicated to the client. That's right. We must stay the course, even knowing that that road ain't going to always be super smooth. That's right. That's right. We can't always look for the easiest way out. We can't always expect somebody else to do the rowing for us 100% of the time. You know what? We got to stay dedicated. We got to get in our minds to get in there and do a little bit on our own here. That's right. right. Some help? Yes. Definitely from your friends, your Christian friends, and everything else. But God, yes. But don't expect them to do it all for you. Right. You've got to dedicate your time and your efforts to that purpose. That's true. We ain't got to always look for the easy way up, do we? Sometimes you just have to press on. And trust what God has shown us. Yes, amen. And just do it. Yes. Okay. Okay. Got it, Steve. I'm with you. So, how? How do I stay dedicated to the climb? Man, I'm so glad y'all are attentive and asking these yes, questions amen. this morning. Amen. Good question. The answer? Hallelujah. Prayer. Prayer is the key to staying dedicated. Yes. Staying dedicated to the climb. For all of us, yes. we must pray. We must build our trust and our faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. He's going to help us make the right decisions. Yes. And he's going to help us stay on our spiritual path. Yes. As long as we stay dedicated to the path. Yes. Yes. Think about this. Abraham was faced with seemingly an um, impossible climb. I mean, his task on his climb, I don't even fathom. But he stayed dedicated, didn't he? Yes, he did. He stayed the course, didn't he? Amen. Come on with it. He trusted God, didn't he? Yes, he did. He went up there to sacrifice his own son, but he trusted God. Yes. Right. And what happened? God provided. Amen. Why? Because he was dedicated to the path. He was dedicated to stay on course. God provided that lamb, didn't he? Yes, he did. And he'll do the same for me and you. Yes, he will. All we got to do is just listen to him and stay dedicated. Third thing, determination. To be determined is to press on or push through, notwithstanding the obstacle. 
for all of us climbing this spiritual mountain, we got to stay determined. That's right. We got to stay determined to what? Follow God's guidance. Amen. But we can't finish this climb doing it on our own. Amen. We can't deviate from God's plan. As long as we follow his lead, we can overcome that the obstacles that Satan is going to lay before us. We have to be determined to overcome those obstacles. We have to be determined to trust God in helping us overcome them because we won't do it by ourselves. Amen. Stay determined and stay on God's course. Yes. Or if we lose our focus, <clears throat> Satan will be laying there in wait to push you right back down in the valley. He don't care where you are on your climb. All he's going to do is look for a place to hinder you, cause you to fail, and then fall. That's his goal on the mountain. And let me tell you something. The harder you fall, the worse it hurts. Yes, amen. The longer you go up that mountain and the farther you fall, the worse it hurts. And let me tell you something else. This tends to make you just a little bit less determined to start that climb again. Yes, yes it does. does. Exactly. Okay. Okay. D. How do I stay determined to reach the top of the mountain? Man, y'all are on it. I am so happy you asked me that question. Woo, what a what a great y'all feel it? Do you feel it? Okay. <laughs> The answer is this, prayer. Prayer is the absolute must in keeping us hungry, keeping us determined to finish the climb. Yes. It'll help you gain some mental toughness. It'll help you gain the fortitude that you need. And so when you fall, and you will, yes. you will be determined to get back up, yes. dust yourself off, and keep striving to reach that goal. Amen. Yes, and man, what an ultimate goal it'll be. Yes. The truth is, guys, many of folks have tried this climb. They tried to climb the mountain. Some have died. Some went away and just said, I quit. Some are still trying to find the easy way up. I gotta be honest with you, most of them just stay in the valley, waiting on God to do it for them. Yes. You never get nowhere unless you try. That's right. You gotta be determined to make it up that mountain. Yes, amen. You gotta be prepared. Yes. You gotta have dedication. Man, you gotta be determined. I don't wanna be in the valley my whole Christian walk. Right. I'll be doggone. I might fall off that mountain 22 times, but I'm still getting up and I'm still yes, climbing. So I'm not looking back. No. I'm looking up. Because yes. there's something up there yes. for all of us. Yes. Yes. Folks just want to let God do it for them. But I'm going to tell you this. The Christian who is prepared and he shows patience and he waits on God's word the one who is dedicated to stay the course, the determination you have trusting God to help you overcome the obstacles that the adversary is going to lay before you, and yet you reach the goal. This is the good part. You will reap the rewards of streets of gold. Yes, amen. Many mountains, mansions, an eternity of love and peace. Yes. Woo! Yes. It'll be worth the struggle. Yes, it will. It'll be worth the struggle. Yes, it oh, will. No. I'll finish with this little short story that I read. It just went so good with what I had brought, what God had brought to my mind. It says there was a man desperate to conquer the mountain. But he wanted to he wanted to go alone to prove to everyone what he had, he alone had accomplished. So he did. He did all of his figuring. He did all of his calculations. 
He did all the needed preparations that he thought he was ready for. Didn't figure he was going to need no backpack or, or camping gear because he was just going to shoot right up that mountain. He had a way to go, and it was going to be easy pickings. He'd be up there in four hours. He'd be down in four hours having supper by, noon, by, mid, by midday. He was good to go. He had it all figured out. So he started up the mountain one early Sunday, Sunday morning. And oh boy, he climbed all day. And it was getting late. And it became very overcast. And he began to snow. But he decided to press on. He, 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 he could see the top. He was just right there. He could see the top. Dark fell, and there was no moon. It was snowing, cold snow falling, and it's pitch black. No moon, nothing on the side of this mountain. He could barely see the hand in front of his face. 100 feet, 100 feet from the top on a ridge, he slipped. He slipped in the snow, falling fast like a rock. He could only see blotches of darkness when he passed over them. He was literally being sucked down by gravity, man. It was just, yeah. In these anguished seconds, his memories flooded his mind and things that he was done as a child and things that he'd done when he married and things that he had done even that day. But he knew death was a certainty. But then, all of a sudden, a jolt in his midsection caught him dead stop. Like the tore him in half, it hurt so bad. But there he was, hanging. Thank goodness that he had staked himself to the mountain with a rope, just in case something like that happened. But now, it's pitch black. He can't see anything. He doesn't know what to do. He's laying there, hanging there, suspended on a rope. It's the only thing holding him up. And he doesn't know what to do. He doesn't know where to turn. And he has no clue. So he does what everybody else does. He cries out. Yes. Lord, Lord, help me. I don't know what to do. I don't know where to go. Help me. And he waited there in the darkness for a few minutes and he heard a voice. And the voice said, what do you want me to do? And he yelled back, he said, save me! Save me, Lord! The voice says in a calm, he asked, he says, do you really think I can save you? And the guy screams again, he says, of course! Of course you can save me. You're God. You can do anything. Save me. A minute went by. And the voice came to him again. And he says, if you think that, then cut the rope that's holding you up. And the guy goes, what? Cut the rope? God, I'll surely perish. As he clenches the rope even tighter because now he don't know what to do. Morning came. And a rescue team found the frozen man suspended in the air clasping his rope with all of his might. Dead. Froze to death. He was three feet off the ground. Three feet off the ground. How about you? How trusting are you into that rope? How trusting are you in to hang on to that rope instead of listen to God? Yes. If he would have cut the rope, yes. he would have fell three feet and walked home. Yes. Cut the rope. Cut the rope. And simply pray. Yes. And most of all, trust. Yes. Trust God. Yes. Trust God in preparation. Yes. Trust God in dedication. Yes. Trust God in determination. Yes. Yes. And 
of the ball. Oh, wait a minute. Mom will do it. I told you, there's going to be a quiz at the end of this, didn't I? <coughs> Can anyone tell me the one key to this sermon? Hot diggles! I'm glad y'all said that. Prayer. Prayer. Prayer is the key. Prayer is everything. Build your relationship. Yes. Stay close to God. Yes. Let him help you. Yes. Let him do the things that you that yes. you can't do on your own. Let him get you over those obstacles. Let him guide you. Yes. He can do it. Yes, he will do it. And I'll say this one more time. We can't make this climb on our own. That's right. Yes. Cut the rope. Pray and trust. Yes. Would you bow your heads? Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for this opportunity. Lord, I ask that you would just be with each and every one of us today, Lord. I ask that you would let every ear hear what they needed to hear today, Lord. I pray that this message got across in the way that I was praying that it would, yes, Lord. Yes. In your name I pray. Amen. 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 Hold on, buddy. It's a tough class. Yes, it is. Have you ever heard the expression, few things in life are easy? There's a lot of things we encounter in life that are not easy, but follow what Brother Steve said this morning. There's a reward waiting at the end. And there's nothing that your ears will ever hear greater than those words well done thou good and faithful servant amen it's worth it you have been faithful over a few things <clears throat> come on in I'm going to make the room roll with me well done amen. keep on clapping keep on clapping be determined be determined I have I, I used to hear some of the old timers as they would testify, I have determined that I'm going to make heaven my home. Yes, amen. No matter what comes, I am going to make heaven yes. my home. Amen. Thank you, Brother Steve, for that powerful yes. word this morning. Yes. Keep on climbing. Keep on climbing. I want to remind you that we're having our service Wednesday night. Looking forward to Bible study this Wednesday night. We uh, haven't got the new material yet for the new study, but I'll be doing something uh, this Wednesday night that I'm sure you'll enjoy. So if at all possible, uh, be here, and we'll have a time of worship together. I want to encourage you to keep on keeping on for Jesus. Keep on keeping on. Yes. Let others know. Because I'm going to tell you something. Time is short and running out. And the church is the only answer that this world has. Amen. We're the only hope that this world has. Well, who is the church? That's you and I. As we are role models of Christ, showing others Christ through us, through our example, we're the only hope that this world has. Let us stand and go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we love you and we thank you for this day.